Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining in for IHRP HR Tech Tech Talk series webinar number three. Um, it's a great pleasure to have all of you here uh, to witness how um, Benny, Gerald, Nicole, Pitwi, and Chitum have been using various technologies and tools to effectively engage with employees. Thank you for joining in. Um, the next slide. Uh, before we get the context setting, uh, quick housekeeping rules. This webinar is definitely getting recorded. And at the end of the session, we're going to have a QR code flashed out. And if you scan the QR code, then we're going to send you a, a docket that consists of the video recording, a combined FAQ answer of all the questions that comes through the presentation and the uh, slides that the pre uh, presenters have used. So you're going to go to get all of it, provided you, you are able to scan the QR code at the end of the presentation. Yeah, you have the option to post your questions in the Q&A box. And if you would like to direct it specifically to a presenter, do mention the name of the panelist and then follow it up with a question. That would really help them address it. We are not going to wait till the end of the session to answer all your questions. That's the best part. So the moment uh, the presenter finishes his uh, presentation, he's going to go online and start answering your questions. And only those questions which we are not able to answer it uh, on chat, we are going to take it up uh, in the Q&A session. So post your questions in Q&A. And if you have any queries, post it in chat. Do not mix up both of it. Thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, the materials that are going to be presented to you uh, have a lot of copyrights. So please resist from screen recording or screen capturing uh, any of these slides. If you would like to have a copy of these slides, you could mail in to the IHRP team at community at IHRP.sg, seek the permission, and we could share it with you. The next slide. The background uh, for the Tech Talk series, uh, this is number three. So we've already had a great response to the first two webinars. Uh, this is actually being organized uh, in the run-up to the Tech Research Study Report that is being launched by Ministry of Manpower and IHRP in September 2020. And we've also launched a HR Tech Skills Badge. Uh, and uh, we want to ensure that we give enough visibility to the Skills Badges for the IHRP members. So this is being organized in an effort to promote these two aspects and also evangelize the adoption of a digital HR mindset among the HR community. And if you're wondering why uh, I'm here, um, you know, while I'm also the founder and CEO of HRTech.sg, um, I have the opportunity of being the program lead for IHRP's HR Tech Task Force. Our main focus of the task force is to drive uh, the adoption of a digital HR mindset among the HR community. So this is a four part series. The final part will be on 25th September, where we are going to focus on how um, we can leverage HR tech uh, to, uh, you know, on for talent development. So from this webinar, we really hope that you have a glimpse of at least eight different technologies and tools that uh, these uh, speakers are using and have found it useful. And we also are hopeful that, you know, you will have insights to some of the best trends and practices uh, that's happening in the marketplace. Next slide. Um, as mentioned, uh, the first one was focused on RPA on 14th August. Uh, the second one focused on talent acquisition technologies, recruitment tech on 28th August. Today we are uh, focusing on talent engagement on 25th on talent development. So uh, don't forget to log in again on 25th September and see some of the best tools to, in, uh, to develop your talent. Next slide. Uh, and I'm extremely thrilled to uh, inform you all that the moderator for today's session is, uh, is, is a fellow um, IHRP HR Tech Task Force member, Benny Leo, an IHRP SP. And he's also the executive director at IYS Group. A fantastic human resource professional with more than 15 years of HR experience. 
he's got experience in running startups uh, you know supporting uh, the hr teams in multinationals at various growth stages he's a strong believer in hr tech he's been partnering with various businesses in their hr transformation journey in the areas of digital hr data analysis design thinking and culture development um and i'm really thrilled that uh, you know benny is going to be the moderator for the session today next slide i just want to leave you all with one thought enterprises that focus on hr technology as part of the transformational agenda are creating sustainable economic value and better workplace experience and especially at this point of time that's going to be a real uh, cutting edge factor for all our organizations so uh, so i hope you have a great uh, session today over to you benny right hi hi everybody thanks zirem uh, for that uh, uh, very thrilling and exciting introduction um, uh, i have been told that we have about 5 510 participant or more so i'm i'm more than thrilled i'm actually nervous at this point of time pretty cool here but uh, but yes just like you uh, um, i'm also here to 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 learn from the panel speakers later on you will get to see now just a little bit of background on uh, today webinar and why we're doing it i mean everybody knows that you know covid-19 has actually changed the way businesses are being run so uh, same thing for hr we also have a new way of looking at things now if you look at it uh, there's a hr tech a uh, map that is being shown here if you can see it uh, but i'm sure later on you can see that you realize that hr tech is actually uh, you can you can actually link it to every stages of your employee life cycle you know i, I you know this is something that hr we like to talk about life cycle and employee life cycle so um so this is no longer like tech is no longer an alternative tool that we are talking about it it becomes an essential tools now so today um i would say that we are going to look at how this tech you know digital and tech hr is going to help us at every stages of the employee life cycle you know and how we we as hr are going to do it now the key factors that's going to aid this growth shift like you know one we we are looking at a new norm uh, just like yourself all of us here i'm sure we are looking from working from home now so there is this remote working that we have to talk about so all the more the question now lot is that how do you reach them so again we are going to hear that from our panel of speaker and all of us i'm sure we are under pressure to how do we deliver with the shortest time the fastest time and reaches out to the biggest audience so that's what we're going to talk about and then today like yourself i think i'm going to learn a little bit more about what are the tools that are going to help us and finally the productivity you know everybody is talking about productivity productivity so again how is hr tech going to help us All right next slide please next slide please yeah okay so the synopsis for today is that we are going to see a strong link between customer experience and employee experience in fact a lot of things that we do in hr are closely linked to customer service you know we always talk about internal customer internal client so the whole idea is that this pandemic has actually pushed all of us to rethink that customer how are we going to deliver the customer service which is actually another word for talent engagement rather you know engaging your customer so again what are we going to do so we are being called to 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 adopt and use automation and technology and then enhancing i think this the d word digital digital everywhere you go we talk about digital digital but you know maybe to my in my uh, my my opinion digital doesn't have to be something that's complicating something that is expensive you know so we probably going to learn more about this what exactly digital is this experience as a hr person okay uh uh and then we were going to talk about all these best in class employee experiences right next slide please okay now um so this webinar as you can see we were seek to address four question 
right? Um, they are all visible on your you know, on, on the screen. I'll just uh, briefly go through one is how do you track and improve employee engagement? I think the keyword here that all HR love to do to use is how do you track? How do you track? Uh, certainly, we are not encouraging people to to you know just monitor them and track them, but tracking more for the purpose of effectiveness, right? That's one. Uh, aligning the individual and team behavior. I think now that we don't get to see your, you know, in fact, I think we probably won't be able to see our worker, our colleague. So behavior is one problem because it will be translated into how do you do your, which is the third, the third part, traditional appraiser. Okay, I think the appraiser is uh, every one of us, we know that we have to do it, but how are we going to do it? And now we're going to have this management system, right? We hear a lot and lots and lots of management system. So again, uh, let's hear from the, the panel speaker, you know, and later on you can have some questions, you can ask them. And finally, we're going to look at how HR tech is going to enable uh, this, this listening culture. I think listening culture is definitely part of engagement. If you want to engage people, you need to listen to them. But we're not going to see them now. So how are you going to listen to them if you're not going to see them? So tech is going to come in. So communication via tech. I think that's probably the, the, the thing that we're going to, to touch on today. Uh, next slide, please. So um, let me just introduce, briefly introduce to you uh, the, the, the speaker that we have. So the first speaker we have is Gerard, Gerard Mr. Gerard Lau. He's the HR director Asia Pacific of war gaming. So for, for those of you who love to play gaming, uh, you probably know what it is. Now, uh, uh, he's an international HR leader, all right? And he has actually had lots of experience over the various industries and companies, all right? And currently, he's actually looking at the Asia Pacific region, right? So before this, uh, he was uh, the HRBP at LinkedIn uh, and uh, BT. So uh, he believed in making good work and everything. So uh, after his uh, presentation, well, should question to him. I'm sure he'll be happy to, to answer, right? Next one, please. Our next speaker, uh, my good friend, <laughs> Nicole. Uh, Nicole is the, presently is the head of uh, talent uh, for Match Move. Now, Nicole uh, is very uh, passionate about HR, about people, and definitely technology is one of her, her biggest pa uh, passion. So now she is with Match Move, and it is uh, and during uh, in Match Move, uh, she plays a very key role, which is head of talent. As you can see, uh, talent is a very uh, uh, nice word uh, for for getting people, and Nicole will be able to share with you how she is using uh, technology to help her to reach out to find the right people. Okay, again, a very HR term, the right people for the company. Right, so her achievement is that she got a, T, a TFAP Exemplary uh, Employer Award in 2018, uh, among uh, uh, the other awards that she has. All right, thank you, Nicole. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the third speaker is uh, Pretty. Uh, I hope I got that right, Pretty. Okay, uh, she, he's currently the CBO of uh, KPI Soft Technology. Uh, and his uh, accountability or his responsibility lies in the digital platform product line. Okay, and how it impacts the marketing initiative, right? So uh, now uh, he was previously also the CHRO and a senior corporate vice president, uh, organization effectiveness at HCL Technologies. So while he has 30 plus years, I think the plus is probably close to 40, but uh, uh, as you can see, very experienced uh, practitioner. Uh, you know, so thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll hear more from him later. Uh, next slide, please. And last but not least, we've got uh, Chi Tong, uh, a very young uh, CEO uh, of Engage Rocket. You know, he will bring with him uh, uh, a different uh, level of analytics, sophistication, and the scientific rigor. Okay, it sounds really scientific to me at this point of time, uh, but yeah, he will tell you more about it. He will show you uh, more later on with the presentation. So before he became uh, the entrepreneur, uh, he was also the Southeast Asia uh, Regional Director. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, later we'll hear more from him. Okay, next slide, please. 
right? So before we start, before we start, uh, uh, we, we need to have a little feel of how you are. So there's some homework here that we need to some work for. So we're going to do a poll, all right? A poll. Uh, later on, it will, it will, it will uh, pop up on your screen, right? So the question is that from an employee perspective, right, what are the top challenges when it comes to work from home? Uh, is it social isolation, meaning that you don't get to see people? Distraction of home uh, at home, meaning there's a lot of noise and everything. Uh, there's a gap from personal life and work life because you know you can't really differentiate. Or is it an infrastructure issue like no Wi-Fi and stuff like that? So go ahead, uh, let us know. Yeah, what is your your vote? You can start voting now. Are we seeing any votes coming in? Well, I think it's a good time to, to really look at you. you know, most of you are actually managing people. So uh, I'm sure you hear a lot, you know, work from home. In fact, a lot of, uh, a lot of people are, are saying that, no, I don't like to work from home. Why is it so? Yeah. Oh, okay. We've got the, the result. It seems like, um, wow, blurring gap between personal life and work life is actually top of 61%. That's more than half which means that uh, yeah, people, when you work from home, a lot of, uh, of the employee thinks that, yeah, you know, I can, I'm like working 24 by seven. Yeah, maybe that's something that we need to, to think about. Okay, right. So um, yeah, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Gerard. So Gerard will, will do his presentation now. Gerard, over to you. Hey, Benny, thank you so much for the introduction. Hi, uh, Gerald here again, uh, HR Director for Wargaming.net. Uh, just for a bit of context and scope, uh, Wargaming is a global computer games company. And uh, on screen, you can see some of our most popular uh, titles. We've got about 5,000 employees globally, 250 of them in Asia Pacific, and more than 100 million players enjoying our games for the past uh, decade. So just, first things first, I want to thank you for having me here with you today to share more about how tech has helped Wargaming uh, engage with our talent. Uh, next slide, please. So... Uh, I don't think we need any introductions to who or what this is. This is literally unprecedented uncertainty and chaos uh, packaged neatly into a shell. Um, I would say the biggest challenge our generation has uh, ever faced. Um, end of the day, this is a people crisis. And naturally, the biggest and most challenging question uh, I get as HR, like many of you here, are from our leaders, managers, and employees. And that question being, HR, what should we do? HR, what's the guidance or policy on this? or maybe sometimes even worse, HR, this is what you should do based on this article or this study or based on what some other company is doing. So those are challenging questions. And uh, you know what I first did was uh, myself and the global leadership, uh, global HR leadership team, we just really took a step back. And then we realized, hey, wait a minute, these are all the wrong questions because HR just jumping into action would only lead to more chaos and confusion. So what's the first thing that we do? We work with the various leadership teams around the globe to first understand what is important to the business. And we primarily distilled it down to two things that was important to Wargaming. Number one, the well-being of our employees. And number two, the ongoing operations uh, of our business. Very logical. Uh, next slide, please. So um, here's what we did. Regarding the first priority, the well-being of our employees, instead of jumping into action, we propose running a survey. Why? We wanted to let data speak for itself. So we launched this survey. Uh, in this instance, in Wargaming, we use a tool called uh, Qualtrics. We already had it, uh, but in reality, you can use any other survey tool. Uh, so what was different? Uh, what was different was that we carefully designed customized questions to collect crucial feedback right, in a timely manner. And we were able to slice that data in order to tell a data-driven story that would help with decision-making at all levels. So just as an example, uh, what did we manage to find? In Asia Pacific, we had about 90% participation rate across two surveys. And that meant that our insights would be statistically representative and that our employees actually believe that we would make a difference. In April, in the thick of things, when all our employees were working from home, the data showed us that only 15% of our employees saw a dip in productivity, while 30% actually saw an increase in productivity. Even us as HR, we were surprised. 
The data also showed that 90% felt supported by their managers, 90% had confidence in our leadership team, 90% felt that communications were very helpful. So what? So what? This meant was that our recommendation as HR looking at the data was everyone, leaders, managers, continue what you are doing right now. Don't stop doing anything, but also don't try to over index with more stuff. No need to arrange online parties or some games or anything. We are doing okay. And then we have a 5% minority of our employees that actually told us we were unhappy. So what did we do? Our HR partners then went to specific teams because we could slice up that data to facilitate an intervention with managers rather than trying to be distracted and focusing on designing a broad programs, right? Now, time passed and in June, when things stabilized, the leadership then wanted Hi, to know. What's up? Oh, what is that? <laughs> so the leadership wanted to know if returning to work was a good idea. Again, we took the approach, but what does the data say? And interestingly, um, when we looked at both surveys, happiness actually increased from the first to second survey because our employees were getting used to the new groove of working at home. But here's the interesting thing. When we asked the employees, how would you feel about returning to work? Happiness dropped by a third. Sentiments of unhappiness grew from 7% up to 20%. And we were also able to slice the data to show that some countries were more happy to return, while some countries were neutral and some countries were polarized. Again, that's just data, so what? So we knew now that we needed to take a site-specific approach to any return to workplace strategy. And uh, in Asia, our leadership team ended up with the decision of, you know what, let's keep it flexible for every employee, right? And uh, rather than dictate a direction, you know. From the comments, we were also able to understand the reasons for unhappiness, right? And our leaders and managers were able to acknowledge them specifically and affirm our employees that, hey, you know what, we have no intentions of forcing anyone to return to work. We also asked questions about how would you like the office space to be set up to provide you maximum safety and assurance. So we got that data and we were able to set up every single one of our offices globally to ensure a safe environment for those who wish to return to the office. And again, with that data at a global level, it provided support for our global leadership to invest in a global EAP. And we're currently implementing that right now. So what's the bottom line here? With technology, we managed to focus on the right things to do rather than the things we assumed needed to be done. And at the same time, we built a whole lot of trust between our employees and the management teams uh, all at the same time. So that was a pretty good experience. Uh, next slide, please. So second business priority, right? Continue operational continuity. Uh, with that particular theme, we actually set up a global pandemic response team and weekly, a group of 20 to 30 individuals will come together to provide updates and plan on how to respond to the evolving situation of uh, the pandemic. Um, at the same time, the global business partners uh, in this group were asked by our global leaders to lead the pandemic response initiatives for each business group. And what did the global business partners have to do? They needed to consider a site-by-site -site operational people, government compliance factors, changing rules, and, and synthesize all that and provide the leader or our leaders with an overview for decision making. This alone was a huge task. These meetings that I attended weekly were complex. Can you imagine having 20 to 30 people on a call, taking turns to give updates for 20 different site locations and trying to synthesize all that complexity into a coherent overview in real time? Impossible. So here's the tech and what did we do? We introduced a, we meaning HR, we introduced a project management tool, which we were actually using ourselves already in HR for some time called uh, monday.com. And uh, this cloud platform prides itself in uh, real time collaboration, providing automated uh, notifications, chain summaries and dashboard reporting. And we used it exactly for this purpose. And uh, the nice thing is that everyone around the business rallied around this tool in an effort to help our company, Wargaming. Um, and what's the result? What's the result is right now on a daily basis, this dashboard is currently keeping about 60 leaders and key stakeholders from various functions, finance, HR, workplace, administration, different business groups, um, all collaborated on one platform. Uh, till date, we have about 4,000 updates on the dashboard since May, 
And uh, imagine trying to get 4,000 updates uh, verbally through a meeting. Uh, that's, that's not possible, right? And all these updates are summarized by an automated dashboard in real time and really allow us to focus on discussing more important matters related to the pandemic response. Most importantly, our HR business partners were able to provide overviews to our business leaders, to our business leaders for strategic decision making. So um, ROI, I don't know if you can put a price on that, but I really imagine the ROI on efficiency and productivity gain would be immense. And for our leaders who are also employees themselves, now they were able to make right decisions under these circumstances and focus on other things that really mattered. So priceless. Um, next slide, please. So here, were, here are my HR uh, learning lessons, just to share very quickly. Um, so in closing, the pandemic has really forced us to think on our feet and prioritize our time to focus on actions that critically matter. And it is truly the tech that has enabled us to do this with precision and agility. Okay, and my first point being the best HR tech tool is the tool that's going to fit your business purpose. And this principle doesn't just apply during the pandemic, it applies outside of the pandemic. Don't implement a tool simply because it's cool or has many, many features. Make sure it is fit for purpose. Okay, now second thing to think about when being asked, you know, our community as HR, when being asked to do something, step back and frame the situation first. What's the overarching purpose? What are we trying to achieve? Is there tech or data insights that we can help enable this decision making? And if you get some data insights, use it to facilitate, coach, consult, have a conversation, tell a story, okay? Um, third point here, and this comes from a more emotional place. Um, we are not alone as a HR community and we cannot do this alone. Collaborate and ask for help, you know, a partner closely with your leadership Remind them that we are in this together. There's no HR versus business. We're all part of the business. Collaborate with other departments, finance, workplace, admin, analytics. Um, thirdly, and this is quite close to home, if you're not yet IHRP certified, get certified. Why? Because you can leverage the IHRP network, right? There's a IHRP Connect app on your phone that you can ask questions and get questions answered. Uh, there are many online resources that the team has so painstakingly uh, put together and very useful resources. We also have a WhatsApp group, you know, very informal, very quick. You know, we try to share tips, help each other with the uh, good information. Um, so uh, that's something that I would really encourage, um, you know, for the HR folks here, um, join IHRP, you know. And lastly, stay strong. All of you are heroes and uh, don't forget to take care of yourself first. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, next slide, that's my thank you slide. Uh, Benny, I'll hand that back over to you. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you for that very encouraging note. I think uh, that's, that's really very important. I think we need to be flexible, but then uh, the most, most important thing is that uh, you have support, okay? So with that, uh, thank you, Gerard, again for that. So uh, let me just introduce you to, uh, to bring you into the next uh, presenter. So that would be uh, Nicole. So Nicole, over to you, Nicole. You might be on mute, Nicole. Nicole, would you like to show yourself to your, your pretty face? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole, and I come from a Singapore-based fintech company called Matchmove. Um, next slide, please. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, you know, IHRP, Sriram, Benny, and my fellow speakers for making this session possible. A lot of work has been put behind to get this up. So back to MatchMove, we are on the set of the leading edge financial technology, providing products like Lightspeed and Remitsend. You are welcome to learn more of our products and services on our website. Uh, today with MatchMove, we have about 150 employees and are present in seven countries. As head of talent, the use of HR tech is integral to our corporate growth and expansion. Next slide, please. So our challenge across the years have always been threefold. I think as with any um, maybe HR practitioners, it's attracting talent, engaging talent, and finally retaining them. I'm sure that this has been challenging for most of the practitioners. My 
My overarching vision for HR is to ensure that every employee engage with HR in a positive and constructive, constructive manner. Sometimes we receive feedback that HR can be tedious, boring, so much paperwork. And so we have to use technologies to help build our vision. So um, here are some of the technologies that we have implemented. The first one will be Google Site. Uh, we call it the, we use it to, um, it's what we call the employee playbook. It's a central repository for all our HR information, a comprehensive collaborative tool for employee orientation, and an ongoing training and retraining uh, platform. By the way, our HR team built this. So the next one will be Darwin Box. Uh, we implemented this this year. Uh, it's our new HRMS for automated employee lifecycle engagement and management. Lastly, there's one more, it's uh, Intellect. It's a step we took to show employees that we care as an employer. And Intellect provided a platform to engage with employees through psychological training and personal improvement. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the largest challenge we HR folks will face is to get business buy-in for any HR tech. Um, so here I would like to share how I business, how I prepare my business case for HR tech uh, adoption. Three simple guides to present to the management, um, process, impact and outcome. First, I always ask myself what process am I trying to improve? Then I will prepare a proper forecast and breakdown of the impact of this application. And finally, and most importantly to the business minded people, and the CFO, I will show the positive outcome that is directly and indirectly linked to this. Let me go through the examples. Next slide, please. So when I first joined MatchMove, there was no good process for employee orientation. We did not even know where to get information for company policy, leave application, training, any relevant documentation, you name it. Next slide, please. So hence, the HR built the HR team built our own employee playbook using Google site. It's free of charge. And this is the process that we went through, through process, impact and outcome. So in the process, there was so much room to improve of communicating and onboarding employees. And we are a tech company, but are using some manual ways to do our tasks. So what would be the impact? Prior to implementation, so much time was spent by employees constantly and persistently asking HR questions like, where to apply leave? Where can I find this? Where is the XYZ document? Uh, what does MeshMove stand for? We typically spend about you know, 30 to 60 minutes a day just manually directing people to the right forms, the right channels, the right people, and a lot of time is being wasted here. And the outcome is very easy to present. Uh, being able to save one hour a day from each person meant savings of at least four man hours for manual repetitive work. With near zero cost to implement and only HR time to learn and build the site, it was an immediate hit with management and employees. Next slide, please. And moving on to recently what we have launched in deciding on the HRMS is quite straightforward, but on a good fit at a reasonable price is always a challenge. And after going through with a number of vendors, we have decided um, uh, to go with Darwin Box. Next slide, please. And so how do I apply PIO to getting Darwin Box? In the process, it's trying to monitor, document, collect and process data on an employee life cycle from recruit to retire usually takes seven days uh, for one employee. And almost everything pretty much manual. For example, we have to fill paper application form, print employee contract, sign scan file, um, and the processing data took the longest because you know we just have to gather the right information, formulate it, and prepare the report. And the impact it was clear, easy to show how a singular system uh, that's collected, compiled, reported all this information will reduce man hours wasted doing uh, manual work. Uh, with the ability and the outcome, with the ability to pull our company organization chart in one minute, it was immediately clear to management how a unified system massively improved data collection, presentation, and for decision making for managers and for employees. It became so much easier to analyze and review employee performance and development across data points. 
Next slide, please. One of the latest HR innovation we have implemented uh, on HR Tech, the implemented was intellect, specifically during the stressful time of COVID and during circuit breaker. Next slide, please. And how did I go about implementing this? Again, going through the process, impact and outcome. We identified many employees getting stressed, psychologically working from home and the overall global situation. Uh, it has caused maybe some uh, loss of productivity while people cope with the change. And what's the impact? This app provides an outlet for stress and mental support. We believe that this will build long-term mental resilience in our talent pool, and many of them will certainly become better leaders and contributors. The outcome? Today, we have an outlet for employees to distress, a discrete channel for them to provide emotional support uh, with little chance to engage in human contact. And surprisingly, there's a lot of introverts in a technology company like me, and we used the app uh, for emotional support. Next slide, please. To conclude, uh, these are some of my personal experience that I wish to share. Uh, I hunted the largest problem in my company and I always start with the process with the smaller step. With the first step, I will try as much conflict, concrete feedback from all stakeholders. And then I force myself to research on go around about the solution and because one size really doesn't fit all. The challenge is deriving the best bits of practices applicable to your unique situation. Once I have identified a set of solutions to recommend to the management, I will then factor in long-term planning. Getting a cheap solution for a stopgap fix can turn out to be an expensive lesson or mistakes in the future. Having successfully gotten management buy-in with process impact outcome. I will always be mindful that in today's technology-driven world, cutting-edge technology like match move, change is just a new constant. So remember, I mentioned that my... Oh, sorry. Remember, I mentioned that my overarching vision for HR is to ensure that each employee engage with HR in a positive, constructive manner. This is my last and final point of how match move uses technology in talent engagement. In applying IQ, EQ and cultural intelligence to the five W's. Who, what, why, when, and how, and how, and why, sorry. We try our best to make every employee journey with match move as automated, frictionless, and constructive as possible. The user experience and the employee experience is priority. This in turn allow us, the HR professionals, to do what we really want to do best, which is to spend time nurturing, mentoring, and building talent just for match move, but also for the industry at large. Uh, to conclude, lastly, please stay well, stay strong, and join the HR community with IHRP and you get a lot of support. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I think uh, we, we actually have a, a little feel of how technology is going to help us. Probably the key word here, the, 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 the main thing that we want to look at is, I'm going to ask ourselves, are you managing people with technology or are you using technology to manage people? Right, that, that, that may be something that we might want to think about it. Okay, now, thank you, Nicole. Now, before we, we go to the next speaker, um, yeah, we're going to have another poll again to, to have a feel. Uh, how uh, you, at this point of time, uh, feel about the whole thing. Now, can we have the poll question? Yeah, okay. Now, in the last six months, okay, has your HR team implemented any new tech to facilitate better employee collaboration and engagement? Very straightforward question. Yes, you have, or no, you have not. Right, okay. So, uh, do, do let us know uh, your answer, or your response uh, now. Okay, uh, we should be getting the result pretty fast for this question. Um, you know, yeah, HR implemented technology, not, not necessarily very expensive, uh, you know, software or anything. It's something that you have done to automate any of your process, you know, whether it's onboarding or performance management. Yeah, I, I believe we've got the result. Boom, wow, oops. Okay, that's close to like 50-50, but um, a little sad to see that yes, it's 41%. Uh, but I hope that after today's uh, webinar, you will, you will go back and, and really look into 
using more technology, as you have heard from the panel speaker, how it has helped for you to reach out. You know, I think uh, again, as HR, we want to know how to reach them. That's it. All right. Okay. So that's a good uh, response. We have that. So um, um, now that we have heard from uh, Nicole and we've heard from Gerard, let's, heard, uh, let's hear from uh, Priti. Privy. Uh, oh, oops. My, my screen is a bit. Oh, okay. So let's hear from Privy. Uh, so over to you. Thank you, Benny. Uh, it's great to join this afternoon, uh, and I appreciate everybody on a on a uh, f uh, you know Friday evening taking time out to sharpen the saw and pick up new thoughts. I am for sure, um, and I'm looking forward to answer some of the questions that are coming in. I represent uh, KPI Soft. Uh, KPI Soft is essentially a company that has built a, a digital uh, platform which enables recommendations across performance, careers, learning, productivity, and helps uh, individuals and teams uh, deliver and exceed expectations uh, through uh, some of the tools that we offer. So as I go to the next slide, um, if we can shift to the next slide, I will talk to you a little bit about the ecosystem that many of you would possibly be having. I think it was interesting to see the response that uh, on the poll that Benny just ran, uh, that you know, though many people have sort of looked at technology and accelerated digitization possibly over the last six months, uh, you know, I'm sure many of you already have most of the transaction systems in place. Our focus is really around uh, performance learning, succession planning, career management. And we believe that the way to actually translate technology, and I think this point was made in some of the conversations, as to how do you actually translate the use of technology to drive action or to actually truly improve experience, of people rather than you know the other way around of just having a tool which possibly is not realizing the benefits and we do this by embedding an analytics layer on top of all our or on top of our platform that answers some of the questions uh, that i've headlined over here so let me talk tell you a little bit about how that happens so if we move to the next slide most uh, you know, we look at performance beyond what the traditional performance management processes have been uh, considered till today. And, you know, performance management is possibly the most hated process uh, by employees and leaders when they look at, you know, does it really help me do better or not? You know, most surveys or most in, uh, conversations that you have, this is a process uh, that most people don't really uh, if leaders feel it takes too much time, uh, employees feel it doesn't really reflect truly what they do. So what, what, uh, what we've sort of taken away from that is really that performance is really uh, driven every day and what, what we need to power is really the proficiencies and the line of sight as to what extraordinary performance can deliver for the individual and the team beyond just a performance ritual. Uh, which is, you know, let's do an annual appraisal, let's do a performance review, which turns into more of a process step rather than truly driving performance. If you look at most consumer apps today, you know, you are basically using them every day to tell you, you know, what is the, what is the best uh, deal, what is the best direction to reach. Uh, maybe if you're taking a grab, let's take a, a shared taxi app, you know, how do I go from here to my destination the fastest? Where is that traffic? You know, what, where do I have to pay extra toll? So it gives you recommendations on how to make your journey faster, better, more comfortable. Similarly, what we've done is we've added in a, a, a lot of personalized prescriptive and predictive nudges, which links to your KPIs and your strategy and performance. And we found that clients actually benefit uh, from these insights and nudges to accomplish their missions as they sort of progress through the year, through the month, through the week. 
uh, we do, uh, we also have uh, you know built in certain ways to reward recognize people and the idea is not really to just talk about kpi stuff but i think any tool or platform that you use i think in today's world can benefit from an analytical layer or from a uh, from a behavior changing layer of uh, which actually uses behavioral economics and nudges you to take further actions so if I move on to the next slide, I wanted to just uh, dig a little bit deeper into the kinds of features that we have uh, experienced with our platform, which have had the most impact for people um, as we look at uh, enhancing performance. I think one of the conversations we had was around, you know, in these difficult times, where like you have a distributed workforce, how do you ensure that three things really continue well? One is around communication, and I think a lot of companies have adopted to using Microsoft Teams or Zoom or other, you know, Google Meet or any other tools to actually make sure that there's a video and connect ability to connect. I think the second area is around collaboration, and I think that's also there are lots of tools which can enable that. I think what one needs really to think about is. Is this communication and collaboration truly resulting in contributions? Um, and what we are trying to suggest is that one needs to look at all these things in a single place and make it easy for the individual or the leader or a team to actually bring, uh, to be able to look at a common scorecard, drill down to an individual, look at who has been assigned the task, who is sharing a responsibility for a task, who owns an activity, personalized to them specifically, um, and then really use that information that is consolidated in a single place to push insights and push suggestions which lead to positive behavior. Um, if that is happening, one needs to of course recognize it, applaud it, and reward it and you need to have, have an ability to do that because you know uh, people respond to that and people will respond to recognition if you look at your talent engagement i think the biggest challenge for us lies is really what i'm doing every day is somebody noticing it and am i being and am i being called out for it doesn't have to be publicly but at least i know that you know there is meaning in my work um, and our effort is really to say that this platform, when introduced, whether in a distributed workforce or in a, in a for a team in an office, that that is what we try to really accomplish. Is really look at how can you engage, enable, and empower people to deliver performance that is meaningful, both for the enterprise as well as for the employee himself or herself. If I go on to the next couple of slides, and then I'll wrap up. I, I wanted to share two case studies uh, as to, you know, does this really pay off? Um, and I'll talk a little bit about an implementation that Forrester, uh, which is a consulting firm and, uh, you know, analyst studied in of our platform in the Smart Dubai, uh, which is a, the, the, the gov in government uh, organization in UAE, uh, and tried to look at how long do, does it really take to impact performance i think uh, you know we were, I, I was listening to uh, somebody speak the other day and they were talking about the benefits realization issue the adoption issue in in a current environment where really people are looking for an roi given that everybody is in a little bit more of a cost containment mode it becomes a very important conversation to have as you look at upgrading how to maintain performance, especially as teams continue to remain remote. Um, I think people are going to look for real dollar values around, is productivity really gaining? Is it helping my leaders? Has there been any cost savings from legacy solutions? And how has my operational expenses truly come down? So you will see some of the numbers here, um, and you can see the significant impact that, that, the, that the platform makes you starting as soon as from year one as compared to more traditional systems. Moving to the next example, 
is really uh, the benefits realized at a conglomerate, uh, you know, which operates out of Indonesia, a company called Sinermas Mining, that some of you may, be, may have heard of. It's the country's largest, second largest uh, conglomerate there. Um, and we introduced uh, a platform that they renamed it uh, and called it Impact, which I think was very telling about what they were looking for. Um, and you, if you look at some of the metrics that uh, we, we measured, so along with introducing our platform at that time, the company also asked us to help them set up an enterprise performance management office or a team. It could be your HR team, it could be a finance team, it could be a combination, but they essentially wanted to ensure that, you know, introducing technology was not just done independently, but was actually going to deliver the uh, business case and the benefits that we had talked about as important to them. Um, and when you look uh, across uh, a couple of years later as to how we have progressed, I think all the numbers are extremely uh, encouraging. Uh, you know, I especially think the in, in satisfaction of being able to coach in, to talk to somebody, connect with somebody, really uh, is something that I think in these times is really necessary, aside from, of course, the more tangible numbers. So, I, I, you know, I'd encourage you all to sort of uh, look at your performance management processes and see, I think what Nicole spoke about, the PIO approach was excellent. I think you apply that and uh, see what sort of emerges as needs and uh, things that we can help with. If you move to the last slide, uh, you know, if we can uh, help in any way, uh, feel free uh, to uh, connect with us and uh, we'd be happy to have a conversation. Benny, back to you. All right. Thank you, Pretty. Uh, that was uh, very uh, detailed and insightful. Um, before we go to the next, uh, uh, you know, the next, next uh, presenter, there are some questions uh, that perhaps the panelists, uh, well, if you have uh, type in your, your question, uh, uh, do give some time. The panelists will try to answer them as, as soon as they get to read them. All right. Uh, in uh, looking at the time, probably I need to introduce in the, the last speaker, Chi Tong. Uh, Chi Tong, are you there? Hi, Benny. Hi, everyone. Okay, over to you, Chi Tong. Thanks very much, Benny. And uh, I, I know you guys have just sat through uh, quite, quite a number of very interesting presentations. Uh, I'll try to continue that uh, here. So um, at Engage Rocket, uh, this is something that we study uh, a lot. This is, this is our bread and butter. We, we, uh, we live and breathe this stuff. And um, today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about how we have seen companies create a best in class employee experience uh, in order to improve employee engagement. Uh, so next slide, please. A quick introduction to Engage Rocket for those who uh, may not know us. Uh, we are the fastest growing people analytics software company based here in Southeast Asia. Um, we're a startup uh, based in Singapore uh, and have, have been growing very fast since uh, we uh, started about four years ago. Um, this is, we've been fortunate to have been featured uh, in a number of different outlets in the press uh, and have been privileged to work with more than 100,000 users uh, across Asia Pacific and the world. Um, so. The first thing here that I'm going to be sharing with you is, uh, I think we hear a lot about the new normal and, and uh, I think Gerald actually shared uh, a little bit earlier about um, how there was this inertia towards um, working from home once uh, we started the circuit breaker. And, and this was a study that we did uh, together with IHRP uh, and SHRI where uh, we, we interviewed more than 20,000 uh, employees across 127 companies, wow. uh, across all the different uh, sectors in Singapore. Uh, you can actually download the, the, the full white paper with this QR code. So we're, we're giving away freebies today. <laughs> um, and uh, what we found that was very interesting actually from, from early on. So we're, we're the, uh, this study was actually the, uh, the study that has the largest consistent database of uh, workplace sentiment in Singapore through uh, the sensitive months of COVID-19, uh, April, May, when we were still in circuit breaker and beyond. So even June and July, once we started uh, entering phase one and phase two. 
and we were tracking data uh, on a weekly basis uh, across all of these different companies. And what was very interesting to us when we first started was, was this, and it got picked up by the Straits Times actually, uh, where we found that interestingly, even though so many people were complaining about working from home uh, in, in the early uh, days of the circuit breaker, we found that more than, more than eight out of 10 uh, of the respondents were saying that they wanted to work from home more than half of the time. So this is quite shocking to us. This, if we think about it, uh, more than half of the time, that's two to three days a week uh, working from home or, or two, two, uh, two weeks in a month. So to what extent are companies today um, prepared to allow for that in the long term? Because this was something that, uh, this is the question actually, if you, uh, if you look at the, the question below the chart, it's based on my experience working through the circuit breaker and beyond, I can see myself working from home permanently. Oh, half the time, a quarter of the time, three quarters of the time, or hundred percent of the time. So you'll see that actually only less than 10% of people said that they do not want to work from home. Um, and even only one quarter of the time, that's still more than one day a week or, or one week in a month. So it's still a considerable preference uh, to work from home. And this uh, speaks to the adaptation that we were going through as a workforce. So how do we uh, do we even want to unwind this uh, is one of the, the key questions about the employee experience that needs to be answered. Um, num uh, next slide, please. So the first uh, point that I would make um, that, that I think you, uh, I, I'd like everyone to take away and I'll recap all of this later on. The first point is that uh, by deploying people analytics uh, and deploying technology to, to run this analytics for you, you're actually then able to make what is very intangible in the HR space suddenly tangible. And, and with that information at your fingertips, you're then able to make more informed decisions. You're then able to uh, direct very limited resources in the, in the right areas and the right priorities. So um, I, I, I like what uh, Gerald said earlier, like after you've done all the analysis, then so what, right? And one of the, the pieces of analysis that we did with the, uh, the study that we did with IHRP was this, this particular uh, chart where we actually used employee net promoter score as a proxy for employee engagement. So for those of you who are not familiar, what ENPS is, is a single question. Uh, how likely are you to recommend your company as a place to work. Uh, and this was it was developed by the global management consulting company, Bain and Co. Um, and it's on a zero to 10 point scale. Uh, and it divides your employee population into three. So you have your promoters who are highly engaged, your passives who are, you know, they show up nine to six every day, uh, but they don't necessarily go the extra mile. And your detractors who are, are quite unhappy about where they are working. So when we did this analysis, we ran a multiple regression on uh, employee net promoter score uh, with all the different engagement question drivers that we, that we asked. And what we found was, was really interesting. In a crisis like, like now, the most important driver of employee engagement is the demonstration of care by the organization at all levels of the company. The second highest uh, if you look in, uh, on the, the x-axis or the, the horizontal scale, it, we track the impact on uh, net promoter score, meaning to what extent does a change in one of these questions change uh, your employee engagement. So the higher, the, the, the more sensitive your employee engagement is to that particular factor. So the second highest factor that we found was organizational support uh, in terms of the effectiveness of communication that uh, was delivered at all levels. And finally, very interestingly, was the managers. So managers at, at the team level, they had the, uh, the second highest impact beside, behind the organization. And the ability to give clear and regular feedback while working remotely was a major uh, factor in terms of whether people felt engaged or not. So this was interesting because it was not just about the care and concern that needed to be communicated, which was very important. The next thing that needed to be communicated was, I, I want to know that I'm productive. I want to know that what I am doing is linked to what, uh, uh, is linked to what the uh, organization needs. 
So that's where the, the manager's feedback comes in. So what we found was that there were actually a, a few different good examples of this. Um, when at the organizational level, we, we work with a large local tele telecommunications company. And one of the things that they immediately did and responded to the, the analytics that they did was they found that a lot of people were having trouble with the, how ergonomic their, their work from home chair was. So they actually made it possible for people who wanted to bring home their office chairs to do so. So they could take their chairs home from the office uh, that were very ergonomic and they could bring it home uh, and use it at home. They were then also able to, uh, they, they also ran regular pulse surveys to address pain points and to, more, more importantly, to be able to see the progress uh, of those pain points over time. And they fed these results back into their bi-weekly town halls. Uh, another example uh, was a uh, global brewery. So they, they make uh, beer here in Singapore. I, don't, I guess there's only one. <laughs> and uh, immediately they started holding happy hours on Zoom. Uh, and they made it a point that people would obviously bring uh, alcohol and so on to, to these happy hours. And they were then uh, managers and teams at all levels were then able to share these with them. Uh, finally, a another uh, very interesting example was uh, by a global marketing automation software company um, where to, to deliver this manager support, they, they actually structured one-on-ones. So these manager one-on-ones um, and they structured them around a few different themes. So there was a well-being one-on-one -on -one where once every two weeks or once every three weeks, managers were encouraged to meet their staff on a one-to-one -one basis to talk about their mental health and mental well-being. Uh, they, there were also performance one-on-ones to be able to increase the frequency uh, at which people got feedback about their performance. And finally, there were still career one-on-ones. So even though there was so much uncertainty, they found that managers wanted to uh, pay more attention to people's careers. Uh, next slide, please. So with all of these emerging themes and demands uh, that we find uh, in the workplace because of the pandemic, how do we make sense of this and how do we go about prioritizing? Uh, and, and most importantly, uh, since we are a people analytics company, what, what, what are the aspects that we can uh, apply in our companies to do so? So next slide, please. So these are just some areas, uh, being able to run engagement pulse surveys. Uh, for those of you who have the fortune of hiring new people uh, to be able to uh, run remote and on-site onboarding uh, feedback, uh, to be able to monitor your manager best practice. Uh, so another good example is another company that actually tracked their management, uh, their manager one-on-one -on -one data and found that the frequency of these one-on-ones correlated very strongly with uh, the engagement. We also want to make sure that we're digitally ready uh, and then finally, to be able to equip our teams uh, and our team managers with the right skills uh, and set them up for success. Uh, next slide, please. So the second point uh, that we've covered so far is to be able to link all of these an analytics closely to business objectives, ideally, and to be flexible with them when the, when the time changes. And a very good example of that is actually this uh, case study by, uh, from EasyLink, when they actually started out with a... Uh, belief, uh, core values, so business-driven, empowerment, learning, innovation, energetic, and fast-moving as they transition from a, uh, a, a, I guess, a traditional technology company to a fast-moving uh, tech company. Uh, and they were, they were de deploying Pulse surveys and working with Engage Rocket to, to drive that uh, culture change. And then when COVID-19 hit, they were then able to very flexibly and in an agile manner change the, the ways that they were tracking their their staff uh, and, and, and started to, maybe they started looking at their employee well-being and their productivity while going through COVID-19 in order to help them. And they found that the participation rates went up and actually the engagement rates actually even went up uh, during a crisis by 10%. So uh, the, the third and final conclusion here is to be able to iterate quickly. Um, so don't, don't hope for a big project, uh, just run small experiments and keep moving fast and look for continuous improvements as an agile process. So the three points, uh, again, number one, uh, look for analytics to make your intangible aspects of HR tangible. Number two, be able to link your programs uh, clearly to business objectives and be flexible with them. And number three, iterate quickly 
uh, and look for continuous improvement uh, as an agile process as opposed to a particular objective that you need to hit. Again, you can download this case study uh, with this QR code uh, over here. So thank you very much for your attention so far and uh, back to you, Benny. Thank you, Chi Tong. Um, um, can, can I have the, the panelists uh, to show your face? <laughs> uh, we, have, we have come to the end of the presentation part. And now it's very important that, you know, the engagement, we're talking about engagement, right? So it's a Q&A. Uh, but before we start, uh, we, we are taking, uh, I think there's quite a few uh, questions. Uh, so we will try our best to go through uh, the questions uh, that are relevant to technology. I think uh, for a start, uh, uh, you know, we, we are definitely looking at analytics, you know, technology can help us to analyze uh, with data and therefore, therefore it gives us a chance to, to quantify, you know, your argument to your, to your, to your management. Now, um, let, let, let us, uh, let me just go through some of the questions and, and try to answer them. Uh, okay, we've got uh, half an hour, uh, if I'm not wrong. So uh, we try our best. Now, there's a question that I, I see here, uh, which is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, what are some of the challenges you face when integrating new HR technology with existing HR system uh, in your company? I suppose most companies already have that system. So maybe the panel uh, could, could answer this. Uh, uh, perhaps, Nico, you can start off uh, because you were, you were sharing with us a lot of uh, how you use technology into your various uh, HR activities. Um, okay, sure. <laughs> um, some of the challenges, I, I guess, is really, you know, first, it's getting people ready for this tech. Uh, I think it's really about change management, uh, create the right awareness, um, uh, how let them know what are the benefits of you know adopting uh, new HR techs. Why are we moving forward with newer tech instead of the old ones? Uh, definitely, it's because of either uh, more efficiency, more productivity, or maybe even price. Price. Okay, yeah. that's that's one of the key thing with a lot. Of, now, what what about Gerard? Uh, you know, you talk a lot about you know wellness. I think you are very uh, you know trying to touch your your employee engagement. So, how would you how would you look into this this question here? Yeah, and uh, I think even outside of engagement. So, at Wargaming, we use actually multiple uh, systems, and we launch mm -hmm. multiple systems as well. So, an example is are we using uh, success factors, right? And that was our starting HRMS system. Uh, but interestingly, um, we do we do advocate the approach of what does the business need. So success factors has a performance management module. It has a recruitment module. But I think what we did as a HR organization is really understand how does Wargaming want to recruit. So instead of using success factors inbuilt recruitment module, we use Greenhouse. Why? Because we believe that that is the one that would fit our business needs. Very recently, with the performance management module in success factors, we shut that down. Why? Because it didn't fit our business needs. And what do we do instead? We are also in the continuous performance uh, management philosophy. Uh, we got one of our engineers to design a software that fit exactly how we wanted to operate. You know that we could take real time notes. That you know, and these notes would be automatically transmitted to the employee to different HR, and it's sort of like fully customized and bespoke to exactly what we wanted to do. Now the challenge with any HR technology, as uh, Nicole pointed out, would be, um, would be, do people actually want to use it, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I think uh, it's a flip question. It's not about how do we make people use the technology. If people are not using the technology, don't force them. Find something that works. Alternatively, if it's already a piece of technology that's in the philosophy that you want to operate, um, don't try to start too big, right? Work with uh, work with advocates. You know, based on the data, you'll be able to see who are the highly engaged folks, right? Use them, sh showcase them, tell a story about how it's useful. Because the, the truth of the fact is, if your piece of technology um, is effective, you should see as well in the data and uptake in whatever it might be, business results, engagement scores, you know. And so it's a self-feeding thing, right? And so the better it gets, it will feed into that, feedback into the system. You know, and we continue to tweak and grow the system and more and more people will use it. So you, you really need to be patient and build it into the culture um, that we want to see. And 
all these systems, HR systems, remember, we're all part of the business. This is not a HR system that HR wants you to use, you know. So generally in the day-to-day -day, uh, operating of my team, uh, we work alongside with our leadership teams and our managers. They are the ones sharing about the systems. They are the ones sharing about how they want to run performance management in the teams. They are the ones sharing why engagement is important. Right. It's not an HR thing. Well, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's really the key word, you know, uh, the human before resource. And then it brings us back to, you know, how are you using technology to manage rather than just using the, the, the technology. And, and then, you know, I think there's a lot of human touch here that I'm hearing from the panel. Now, there's one question here. Oh, I just missed it. Uh, somebody must have returned. Okay, now, uh, there's a question here. It says that success depends on both ecosystem. Uh, oh, it just jumped off again. I'm so sorry. Okay, su success depends on both ecosystem and mindset. We're talking about mindset here. So can you please share specific mindset challenge at all levels? Um, probably, I think this, uh, Chitong, you can answer because you're talking a lot about manager and the uh, people so it's a i think it, it's probably something that you could answer this yeah yeah so uh so this is a really interesting question uh from grace i think um when we when we think about mindset right there's there are a few different stakeholders uh, that we we typically encounter and and this this is also from hr's point of view right so obviously there's hr so as hr or people operations uh you have a particular uh, need to support the business then there's management right so there's the people who manage other people people managers uh, so they they are the ones that uh, are going to implement the kind of systems that, that Nicole and, and Gerald were talking about uh, and then finally there's individual contributors who are who need to uh, figure out like okay all these different things that I need to do I have my own targets to achieve how am I going to, uh, I, I don't have so much time to go and figure out like well, all this data, all this whatever. So what we found uh, to, to be true across all the successful implementation campaigns that we've seen is uh, the ability to be able to map out for each of these different stakeholders, what does success mean to them? Uh, so what is it, what's in it for them to be able to deploy a, a tool like this? So for example, um, if we, Take a traditional performance management tool like uh, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, you can name any of the, the enterprise software, on, uh, right? And a, a lot of times, that there's a lot of pain around implementing it because the the implementation is great for HR. So from HR perspective, uh, to be able to well see all the, the the results at one shot, be able to calibrate all that is fantastic. But for the users, it's actually terrible. Uh, for the for the team managers, it's very difficult to 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 actually remember what your team did. And then for the individual contributors who want to, sh to shine, it's very difficult for them to uh, therefore uh, highlight to their managers, like, hey, I did all this, you know. Um, and and, and same, same things with, uh, with, with typical engagement surveys, uh, where you do once a year, twice a year, great data for HR, but then the people on the ground never get to see it. So, so being able to, to couple the, the implementation of the technology with a, uh, a communication plan. Uh, every every new business process that's introduced needs to come with a, a, a change management plan. I mean, even though sometimes it can sound like a very daunting thing, a change management plan can be something as simple as uh, uh, implementing, you know, like one-on-one -on -one templates for managers. Like this is this is a playbook for you as a team manager. Uh, when and and you don't have to boil the ocean and hit everybody, right? Maybe you start with just people who would first become a new manager. This is what you can do with your team. These are some of the, the kind of questions that you can ask your team and uh, record down the notes in, in this particular system here or whatever it is, right? So, so starting small um, and then building up success. So once, the, once people start seeing success, they start seeing what's in it for them, they start driving the process. Managers start driving the process. So uh, I'll give you a very simple example again. Uh, in, in employee surveys, there's, there's always these uh, open-ended questions, right? And you ask, okay, if you could change one thing, what would it be? Wow, people ask you, give you all kinds of responses. And then HR, you're overwhelmed, right? You're, oh my gosh, how are we going to deal with this? And then you're like, okay, let me go and run some focus groups. So you run another two, three focus groups with your teams. <laughs> and then maybe three months later, you, you're like, okay, I, I, I kind of think that this is the, the issue, right? 
So one one thing that uh, we we decided to do was, hey, hey you know, why, why don't we just let people respond directly to their their their, their team lah, right? But anonymously, so anonymously chat back and find out like, hey, what do you mean by work life balance is a problem? And then you get a re- reply, oh, my uh, my daughter ends uh, ends her childcare every day at, at six thirty p.m. My I'm forced to stay at work until six every day. I need to run rush back every day. It's very difficult. Why can't I just start work earlier and end work earlier? And then you're like, hey, okay, problem solved. Don't need to go and do all this focus group, all these other things. Just hit the nail on the head. And once managers start doing this and, and getting a sense that, hey, actually, I, I don't need to go through all of this pain. I can just use this system and, and get my problem solved. Then they'll keep coming back. And then, then the mindset is built and then the ecosystem is built. I hope that answers the question. Right, yeah. But thank you. I mean, that, that's really interesting. You're sharing your experience. And definitely, we, we hear about mindset and everything, which, which leads me to, to, to look at this uh, the next question, which I think is very interesting after we talk about mindset and uh, managing people. It says, that how, how do we leverage EQ across the organization? I, I mean, I, I'd be interested to, to hear from uh, Prefi because you've got like 30 over years of experience. You've seen, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, employee, employer, you know, during your, your long career. How, how would you, how would you uh, uh, answer this? How would you, you advise about leveraging EQ across the organization? Uh, I, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. So first of all, you're making me feel very old, Benny. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think I, I'm learning more every day now than I was uh, many, many years ago. So I think it's a time, it's the sign of the times. But I think, yeah, you make an interesting point. I think there has been a, you know, the, uh, given pressures of work, what we have found is that most managers and leaders tend to become much more task oriented. Um, and they come out of a meeting or they come out of a conversation, find their team and quickly divide up, you do this, you do that, get this to me by Friday, get this to me by next week. It becomes a very work focused, task focused conversation. Um, you know, one of the habits that we encourage people to ask and have the courage to sort of uh, make sure the conversation shifts to ensure that there is a there is more sensitivity in the, the dialogue is really around understanding context and understanding why uh, and understanding what is the purpose of this activity. And I think if you can actually uh, create a safe uh, environment or in, uh, you know, create a habit or create a norm in meetings where or in conversations where people do that, you'll see automatically people practicing much more of, uh, you know, their EQ skills and their ability to sort of, uh, you know, uh, be more sensitive to the, uh, the, to, the uh, to the individual that they're interacting with than other. Uh, you know, the two things impo- are important, I think, in this one is uh, safety. And one is courage, you know, safety being provided by the managers and courage being provided, you know, in a place where people are recognized for when they ask hard questions to get that context that is needed. Because unless that happens, you know, in training people on EQ or, you know, encouraging people to have the, that orientation, I think can remain a bit of an academic uh, expectation. So I don't think it's an easy answer. It's a, it's a good question. I think it's a, it's an action or steps that have to be done every day. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's, uh, that's how organizations which value a culture like that will, will take those steps, uh, you know, all the time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, yeah, I, I receive, I see one question here, uh, which I think it's uh, directed to Chitong and Prefi. I think it's uh, very interesting. Now, the, 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 uh, the question is, can I check for smaller company size? Okay, How do we leverage on tools that are meant for larger size companies uh, where they have the resources and budget? Is there a budget-friendly option that you can share? Thank you. Well, going back to the costing. So, uh, probably Chitong or, or Prefi, you can answer this? Uh, maybe I can take a stab at this. Um, right. Maybe the first thing that I would say is that um, tools meant for larger companies generally are not tools that that smaller companies would want to use. Uh, they they will be they will have a lot of configuration and customization options, and and because of that, they they then become very uh, 
difficult to use um, and, and, and almost impossible to use in some cases without like a, a big IT team to support uh, and, and a lot of other teams to support. So um, what I, I what we have found, I mean, obviously, uh, Engage Rocket is a software as a service, but, but we have found that many uh, software as a service companies um, where you can buy subscriptions, there are, there's no installations or on-premise things that you need to do. Uh, you can work on your browser, on your mobile phone, and so on. So it's very light, uh, light very easy to deploy. Um, these are options that are more friendly for smaller companies. Uh, and also, likewise, because the commitments are lower, um, you, you then actually don't have to go and well, write paper, submit budget kind of thing. Actually, you know, you just take out credit card and use uh, and, and, and pay for it and then claim later on. So that, that kind of, uh, uh, there, there, there are many of these options uh, in the market. Um, and, and we do believe that that is going to be the future of HR technology because uh, it, it's optimized for the user. Uh, so to, to make it as easy as possible to use. Just to add to that, uh, Benny, I think I think Gerald or somebody talked about being fit for purpose. I think one of the important parts when you are buying HR technology is to start with answering that question as to what features are you looking for. I think most technologies today, and I know that we are seeing that with most of the tools that KPI Soft provides, is that it, they are modular in nature. Uh, they can be priced in, uh, by module and you, you, you should buy only what you really need. I think the important thing to remember is about big and small, is not about, you know, is not about uh, the, just the, that, you know, you want something only designed for a small company because every small company at some point wants to be a big company. But there has to be a journey as, and there has to, journey has to match your budgets uh, to be able to buy in small chunks so that when you need more features or you need more additional, functionalities, you are with a partner who can actually deliver that to you. One of the things we've struggled with is that, you know, you, if you, if, if you don't, if you don't have that, uh, the, the ability to grow with your client with, with, based on what he needs, the client costs actually go up because the cost of changing platforms at a time when he is at a different scale or needs different things because the purpose changes. It makes you irrelevant or makes the client have a very difficult time. So that that's that spending adequate time in the beginning to decide fit for purpose, decide what you need when, and what is the journey or budget that you're going to take, and, and that help making sure that that influences your choice of partner. I think uh, helps you uh, ensure that you you will you choose the right tool regardless of uh, you know where you are in, in terms of scale. As well. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. I think uh, it definitely has to do whether it's costly or not. I think uh, all of us need to look at what what our needs are. You know, be creative and be be flexible. You know, I think that's good. That's good. Well, we I think we have one more. Uh, uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, so I think this question uh, uh, that I read is really interesting. It's it's really a mix of both technology and managing mindset, and you know it. You know, the question, how, how do you handle bosses who call employee back to office for meeting? Uh, you know, as when this can easily done virtually, not absolutely necessary face to face. I think with COVID now, we've got a lot of all these challenges. I don't want to come back, you know, talk to me over. So how should we do it? I think uh, uh, probably uh, Nicole, you can start to answer this because she seems to have a lot of, uh, you know, staff engagement program there. Um, yeah, I know it's challenges, especially some bosses can be, you know, only like face-to-face -face interaction and whatnot. But again, you know, it has to be, I think for me, it's it's more on looking at two folds. One is what is the government advisory and whatnot, and to really educate uh, the bosses that, you know, um, this is something that it's recommended, we should follow and whatnot. There's a whistleblower uh, contact number that you know you we might get into trouble you don't want to go into the wrong um, uh, kind of attention and on the other hand I, I believe it's really more about you know education it's it's possible and it's doable and already you know in the COVID world it's really showing that th that's how uh, you know work can be done and still be done during this period where people are uh, you know stuck at home and it's not just in Singapore, right? It's a, a, yeah. a global level. And that's how we've been interacted, uh, we've been interacting with 
with our colleagues, our family members, or across the, the world. So I, I, I believe it's more about really how to manage um, the bosses in a way that, you know, work still get done, the productivity is still there. We can track with either uh, tools or, or, you know, or, uh, you know, really using, applying some HR tools, HR tech tools uh, to check on people performance or whatnot. I guess it's really just about um, knowing how to manage or handle boss expectation. I think Joel wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I <laughs> actually do. And I, I feel for this topic uh, very strongly. And uh, not just this question, I think you'll see quite a number of questions around, hey, this is what the business wants to do. We know that this is the best for the people. How do we convince managers to uh, do this? And, um, and so I want to share something and take it in the right, uh, take it in the right context. And here's the example I usually use. When the business is not uh, earning enough money and in a loss, do you go to finance and ask finance, uh, finance, finance, earn me more money? That, that, that sounds totally off, right? Doesn't it, right? So uh, when people are unhappy, right? Why do you run to HR and say, HR, HR, my people are unhappy, make them happy. Okay? <laughs> and so the, paradigm shift, the paradigm shift I really want to bring here is uh, for myself as an HR leader, I need to lead by example. I need to make sure my teams are happy. And then when I have a leader come to me or a manager come to me and say, HR, my team's unhappy, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to say absolutely nothing. I'm glad you know your people are unhappy. What are you going to do about it, right? Are you even interested in your people being happy? Do you want to work together with me to find out some strategies or things that we can do? Or are you even unsure where your team's current sentiments are. Sure, we have some tech and we have some tools that can help you understand that uh, a little bit better. So to really answer the question is, what am I gonna do with a manager who wants to force the team back? What I'll do is I'll provide the recommendation on why that's a bad idea because it could make your staff unhappy. You know, I'm not gonna send out an email for you to ask your staff to come back. You know, you, you finally, you are the manager, you make the call, you're the decision maker, you've been hired to make the decisions for your people. I've been hired to make the decisions for my people. You've been hired to make the decisions for your people. Now you bring them back, you force them back, they may become unhappy and you know, that's on you. That's on you. So please consider the need. Please consider asking them and creating psychological safety and truly, truly listening if you are causing them any discomfort, right? Because if they do leave, end of the day, if they're a great employee, it is a lose-lose situation for the company for yourself and for the individual's career, right? So, um, and I think that paradigm shift is really important. So for the HR community, I mean, we are, we are people who love people, right? And I think we many a times fall into this trap of, yeah, we can see the soft, we must be the ones to solve this. We must be the ones to do it for them. Um, no, have a discussion with your leadership, have a discussion with your managers, you know, whose, whose responsibility really is it to engage the teams? You know, I'll keep mine engaged and I'll show you the results for it, you know, and uh, do you want to engage yours, right? Your business, your spice of the pie. So that's what I wanted to say. Please don't take it the wrong way. Please don't go challenge your business and say, you are responsible. Not like that, right? I think we've got to go in as trusted partner. For HR, the business will only start to listen to you if they truly believe that you care about the business, you know. And I think sometimes we fall into this trap of, we got to do what's best for the people. Like, look, the people, HR, finance, the leaders, we're all part of the same business, you know. So truly start to understand what's fit for purpose and what challenges you want to help your business overcome. So I'm done with my spiel. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, uh, thank you all the, the, the speaker, the panel here, you know, for sharing with us your experience and some of the solution. I'm sure that I, I think there are more questions coming up, uh, which uh, unfortunately we do not have the time. I don't think so, but I, I'm sure uh, uh, IHRP will look into this and then we could try to, to, to answer them along the way. Am I answering on behalf of IHRP at this point? But okay, uh, I think uh, our time is almost up. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, but before we go, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll hand this back to uh, Serum. Yeah. Thank you very much, Benny. And thank you to all our speakers. What a way to end a Friday <laughs> evening. Great insights, great perspectives. Thank you all for uh, staying back. You're seeing a QR code on the screen. Please do share us your feedback so that we can keep fine tuning. 
that's the focus of hr right we need to keep fine tuning improvise on the way and we hope to have a great uh, session on 25th september uh, look forward to catching up with all of you and yeah benny we will definitely share a consolidated list ah. of all the questions and including even those which are not answered right okay. thank you again and uh, see you on 25th september thank you goodbye everybody thank, thank you, you. Bye. 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 Thank you everybody Bye. wonderful Bye.